to me, mentorship is about like, I need to show people, like, forget the business. I need to show people like, this is how you are as a person. If you do these things right as a person, the business stuff will take care of itself. Hello, and welcome to the Schmidt List, the podcast for people dedicated to managing successful projects, developing impactful products, and building engaged teams. And now, here's your host, Kurt Schmidt. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 39. This week, Clarence Bethia, founder and CEO at Upsy, joins me to talk about mentorship and leadership. And joining me for today's conversation is Josh Feedy, Director of Business Development at Foundry. I truly enjoyed this conversation as Clarence was gracious enough to share all the things he's learned from his successes and failures over the years. I'm confident you'll enjoy the conversation as much as I did. And one quick reminder, October 1st, the Schmidt List is going live at Fulton Brewery. Thanks to those good folks over there, we're going to be having a live show, a lot of good guests, so make sure you block off your calendar now. And so, without further ado, here's my conversation with Clarence Bethia. And stick around for after the show is over for some important news and updates. Clarence, thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. No, I really appreciate you being here. So you're the founder of Upsy, which is an awesome Minneapolis company. It's been around for how long now? Like three, uh, four years? We'll turn three November 19th. November 19th. That's awesome. And uh, you originally started it and then joined the Techstars community, right? I did. So tell me about the inception of it. I've heard you talk about it on a few different uh, shows that you talked about that you had some poor experiences in the past with warranties yeah. and those sorts of things things and you had to think there's got to be a better way for this right yeah yeah so the the, the, the story is I, I try to make the story about other people right and, <laughs> right. and yeah the, the story is about you know we've all been at that point at the register you know inside of a big box store where somebody's pitching us a warranty yeah um, I don't think that's experience is, is any <laughs> is not unique for me or any one of you guys right, right? That story is behind, you know, three main things that, that are happening. You're being overcharged as much as 900%. Two, there's no transparency, so you never get to ask, like, what's covered or what's not covered. And then three, we all take that receipt, we throw it away, or we put it in the shoebox or a drawer at home, we forget about it. Um, so we just wanted to be the company that could solve those problems for consumers. Um, and we wanted to take the warranty industry from a place where it was about, like, oh, I'm scared, I'm going to break my device to I know if I break it, I have like affordable coverage that's going to take care of me. And so when you started it, was it, uh, was it basically just you out of a room in the house or like, how did it, how did it, what was the inception when you, when you finally like started it, uh, getting in some, some ground covered? Yeah. So I think I was lucky in the early days. Um, my wife worked at an agency here in town called Curb Krauser. Oh, sure. And so those guys, they do a ton of work for General Mills and, and those and Walmart and those guys. Mm-hmm. And so she worked there. Um, there, he was a CEO at the time. I CEO Dean Forbes. Um, I approached him and was like, "Hey man, like, like, have you ever been in this moment before?" And like, he sat and talked for like ten minutes. I didn't say, <laughs> say anything. He was like, "I'm going through this with my daughter," and I was like, "Hey man, like, I'm, I'm going to start this company. You guys should do some work for me, um, and let's like, you guys do the brand. Let's figure out a brand. Um, we can talk about you know equity and pay and that sure. kind of stuff." And he was like, all right, well, let me go talk to his partners. And 24 hours later, he got back to me. He was like, all right, we're in. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, so they, wow. they took uh, a stake in the company very early. And so we got off to, you know, from a, a branding start, like the right start, because yeah. um, they built the brand the right way. And so that's kind of how we got going. I, I worked out of their office. I spent every day with their team. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really like an intimate relationship with those guys. Since they were becoming investors, obviously they were really like psyched about making sure we get this right. Yeah, they were beginning. they were invested exactly. uh, with their time and money. Right, <laughs> right, right. And so, God, we spent maybe you know we spent three and a half years like building the brand, talking to insurance carriers. Like it was so much work before we actually press go. And those guys, they were great partners to us in the beginning. That's great. And so with that, like a warranty, like Upsea sort of thing, I, I'm guessing trust has a big, big part of the brand, right? Um, yeah. Is that Was that a big focus for you up front? Like you can, it's a brand you can trust. Right. That's why you choose this and not the really expensive one that comes from the big box store, right? Right. The, the honest answer out of the gate was we were so focused on those three problems mm. That now I think about trust okay. and right and like building a brand and getting more mainstream. Mm-hmm. Um, but back then we were just like, gosh, let's just solve these let's three just problems. Make it work. And we would put out surveys. And we would you know be like on a corner handing out flyers. Like, 
give us feedback on this and we'll give you $10 off your first plan.